travel and tourism is playing a major role in shaping development and the image of Africa across the world today. From luxury breaks in vibrant historic cities. Marrakesh is magical. Everybody is talking now about Marrakesh. To some of the world's most idyllic beach locations. They wanted to create the ultimate escape and island getaway, a tropical paradise. And the iconic wildlife that draws visitors from around the globe. Londolozi means protector of all living things, and that's sort of at the heart of what we try and do. This is the changing face of tourism on this magical continent. This is Inside Africa. Welcome to Inside Africa, where we're exploring the changing travel landscape, from idyllic beach vacations and vibrant city breaks to the iconic safaris that have dominated the travel scene on the continent. Leading us through this transformation is Sheree Robinson, a travel expert and the founder of Tastemakers Africa. With her insights, we'll explore the dynamic trends and emerging experiences that define travel in Africa today. Travel in Africa is really in an exciting moment. I think I started my company 10 years ago and to see the interest, the growth, and the excitement around not just your traditional destinations, but emerging destinations on the continent is something that I am just extremely, extremely passionate about and excited about. When you're looking at trends, you're seeing places like Ethiopia, Morocco, and South Africa really hit their stride and bounce back to pre-pandemic levels, seeing 10, 20, 30% growth in the last year. And then you're looking at places like Tanzania, a place that people thought was only about safaris, now becoming an urban and even beach destination. So beach tourism on the continent is definitely like growing really fast. And I think you're seeing that loud and clear in Tanzania and specifically Zanzibar. I think Zanzibar is a destination just offers so much on one, one island. And you're seeing that along East Africa, um, Kenya has a beautiful coast. Um, you're going to Diani, which people are excited about, but then you have Lamu, which is this old Swahili town. So you're really having a really diverse beach experience that you can't really get anywhere else in the world. It's just an incredible place, yes, to get sun and sand, but also to just be transported into another time, another place, and be immersed in something you're not gonna get anywhere else. This is Tanda Island, a truly exclusive Tanzanian paradise in the Indian Ocean. This remote sanctuary sits within the Shungimbili Island Marine Reserve, surrounded by its own vibrant coral reef. What makes Tanda Island so unique is the concept behind the story. As guests arrive into Dar es Salaam, they're met by Tanda Island's very own helicopter pilot, setting the stage for an unforgettable journey. As soon as they see the speck of sand in the middle of the Indian Ocean, surrounded by turquoise waters, crystal clear blues, emerald greens, they're instantly blown away, flying over the island. Nestled amidst this natural wonder lies the villa. Inspired by the Kennedy's beach home in Massachusetts, it's a haven where guests can embrace the charm of East Africa. The way that the villa was built with a very conscious mind onto sustainability, where we have the largest off-grid solar farm in Tanzania, so we are fully self-sufficient. The private villa features five suites and two rustic Tanzanian bundas, catering to large extended groups of family and friends. You see this villa that is so beautifully built. Guests generally don't really realize when they're booking the island that they actually have a whole private marine reserve all to themselves. And with Tanda Island's guests waking up beside the Indian Ocean, it's no wonder that diving and water sports are central to the experience. The list of activities 
on this private uh, marine reserve and sanctuary are endless. We have a boathouse filled with toys for all ages. Guests can go diving, snorkeling, they can participate in our coral reef restoration that we encourage and are so happy to show and educate our guests about the work that we're doing. Not only are we operating a luxury island, but we are also protecting this sanctuary that we have here. Resident dive master and coral restoration expert Hassan Jumbe leads the charge in protecting the island's underwater ecosystem. We need to protect our ocean by to restore the reef because before a lot of people they didn't understand how important the coral is. So they destroyed a lot of corals. But now we are trying to educate people. We are trying to show how we work on it to make sure it come back in a normal situation, like a natural situation. Hassan and his team, aided by the island's guests, are revitalizing reefs using broken pieces of coral. So this morning we went diving to collect uh, coral opportunity. We found them on the sand because if you leave them on the sand, they're going to die. So we, that's why we call coral opportunity. So we bring them here and we cut in small pieces. The team create rope nurseries using the coral fragments, providing the optimal conditions for regeneration and growth. So if you cut in small pieces, uh, you have more chance to grow up like a twice or three times than normal. So what we do, we leave one meter at the end of the rope and uh, after that we twist the rope, we put the coral inside, as you can see, and we leave uh, space from one fragment to another, as you can see about this long, and then we put the other uh, fragment. With the aid of guests and residents of nearby Mafia Island, Hassan and the team at Tanda are planning to restore one hectare of reef over the next five years. The continued efforts have already led to resurgence of marine life around the island. I remember from when I first came here, I would see close to one or two black-tip reef sharks. We now have a thriving population of them. You jump in the water and you could almost be surrounded by them. We are very lucky on this side of the world uh, where whale sharks are found and we have quite a high number of whale sharks found here. We are very lucky as Tanzania, also as Mafia Island, we have this giant creature. So we're trying to protect as much as we can and we're trying to talk to different people to tell them they can come to see it. They can grow up to 18 meters and it is probably one of the most exhilarating experiences I myself have even done. They are so gentle, they move so swiftly and slowly, you can just glide along with them. It is such an incredible experience. As guests enjoy the pristine water and marine life, it's the dedicated team, mainly hailing from nearby Mafia Island, who ensure things run smoothly. Tanda Island has a wonderful and dedicated team to guests staying here where they're so proud and so happy, very humble to be taking care of families on the island and majority of them are actually employed from Mafia Island. As the day draws to a close and the sun sets over this island paradise, Tanda stands as a beacon of luxury intertwined with conservation a sanctuary under the fading light. Tanda means love in the Zulu language uh, in South Africa and I think Tanda Island is definitely redefining what luxury travel is here with also a sense of responsibility to commitment and to conservation and really making a positive impact. Welcome back to Inside Africa, where this month we're looking at the changing face of tourism in Africa with travel expert and entrepreneur, Sheree Robinson. Safari is a really interesting thing and it is such a dynamic experience. 
Where I think safari tourism is really interesting is that it's being reframed as this opportunity to connect to the land. And that framing is more inclusive of everyone who wants to experience safari and also the Africans working in the safari industry. And I think that is a, a much overdue update to the language and way we experience safari. And so it still will top many people's list as the reason they should go to Africa. There is a version of safari accessible to everyone. And I definitely think it should be crossed off your bucket list. This is Londolozi Game Reserve, one of Africa's oldest and most luxurious private game reserves. It forms part of South Africa's Greater Kruger National Park and has a history that stretches back almost a century. At its core, it believes that wilderness is not a luxury, but a necessity of the human spirit. Londolozi means protector of all living things, and that's sort of at the heart of what we try and do. Established in 1926, Londolozi is internationally renowned as home to one of the world's largest populations of leopard. That, along with other iconic and endangered African wildlife, attract guests from around the world. For us, it's about bringing someone into an intimate experience with nature and reconnecting people back to nature's rhythms. And I would say that today, more than ever, the natural world is the ultimate luxury. And to experience the ultimate luxury of nature, Londo Lozi offers a number of private, exclusive options for their guests. We've been looking after people since the early 70s. So our camps are designed in that traditional style of having something for everyone. Some people like more traditional bushveld camps or safari camps, and others like the top end luxury sweet side of thing. The top of the pile would be the private granite suites. The three suites on the banks of the Sand River offer privacy, exclusivity and luxury. Their design combines modern elements with African influences that blend with their environment, creating a sense of being immersed in wilderness. The breeding herds of elephants that come down from the Kruger National Park, they move through the river systems. And so when you're staying at the Granite Suites, you really have an intimate experience with those elephant herds. Silence, time in wilderness, watching a sunrise or a sunset can really move people. And when they go home, they start to ask different questions. It has the power to change and create change. These suites form one of three Londolozi camps recognized by Relais and Chateau the prestigious Worldwide Association of Luxury Hotels, Resorts and Restaurants. To be awarded membership, a property must have a unique character and offer both fine dining and excellence in hospitality. The luxury that Londolozi has redefined starts with its roots in the conservation development model. And that model at its core was about land restoration and having a hospitality level that was incredibly high. Londolozi was the first game reserve in Africa to be awarded Relais and Chateau membership and an integral part of what secured them this recognition. This international stamp of excellence was their culinary offering. We do what we call it simple and sophisticated. Everything that we do at Londolozi, very simple but very delicious. So that makes our food different from the others. When you get to Londolos, you get to try a local food that makes our place so special. Making sure that our African roots come through and making sure that when the food hits the plate, is it delicious? Key to maintaining the highest standards are quality ingredients. And some are grown right here. We grow our fresh vegetables, our leaves, like fresh from the garden and we do have our local people that are giving us our vegetables. They're growing nice vegetables out there and they bring it to us. Those people that are working on those gardens, they depend on that job. So by doing that, we're helping them, they're helping us. Another sometimes elusive element in creating a memorable guest experience in nature is space. We have a very 
a low ratio of vehicles to, to, to land. So 15,000 hectares for 15 vehicles, and that gives us space, it gives guides and trackers time to really immerse the guests in nature and connect you to what's going on. Uh, there's an African Jacana flying across on the other side there. Big crocodile too. While guests arrive here anticipating luxury, the team at Londolozi know that along with their unspoilt environment, their people are their biggest asset. <laughs> People come back for this experience, but it's the people that they connect with, and that is one of the primary reasons that I think our guests return to Londolozi. And the second, which is slightly more subtle, is that this experience is in a wild place. It falls within the rhythms of nature. Operations manager Krai Sitole believes that what differentiates Londolozi from other destinations is that it's a family business. It's like generation after generation. For example, my grandfather, who used to be a tracker by the name of Tuton Sitole, and my dad as well spoke Sitole, that he was one of those uh, first chefs. Who knows, my son shows potential being um, a tracker, so hopefully one day he's going to come and work here. And the team here work together to make sure things are done sustainably. We speak a lot in our business of uh, the idea that tourism is this double-edged sword. It's wonderful in terms of bringing people in and offering a, an experience of luxury, um, but with, with those demands comes potential negatives in, for, uh, from an impact point of view on, on the land and from a sustainability point of view. So we're always looking at, at that balance and we are looking for ways to ensure that we, we maintain something that is harmonious. The wilderness experience is central to what we offer and it's critical that we don't ever lose sight of that. And for their guests, the luxury and the legendary wildlife may be what brings them here, but what makes so many of them return again and again is the hospitality. That idea of family flows through the entire organisation. So I think when, when guests come to stay with us, they feel that authenticity. And when you have a place that is generational, we know the leopard that you're looking at, but we also know her grandmother, her great-grandmother, and her great-great-grandmother. And there's something rare about that. You go away from the subjective idea that an animal is an animal. That's a rare alchemy that is hard to find. Travel in Africa is changing, and with it, many of the continent's hidden gems are getting the attention of the world. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the cities. I think urban or city break tourism on the continent is, for me, the most exciting area of growth because it has been the most underserved, uh, untalked about sort of uh, opportunity on the continent. Um, yet there is like a world of happenings. Um, cities on the rise on the continent are Accra, number one, in Ghana, a hub of culture, food, art, and even music tourism. Then you're seeing some places like Marrakesh, Morocco, also being a hub for top tier food, top tier art experiences. And you're seeing new hotels like the Nobu Hotel open in Marrakesh, which are like five-star experiences with immersive culture that you just like aren't getting in other places. I think the other places I would say are Nairobi, Dakar, Senegal with the African Art Biennale and Johannesburg with Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week also becoming like city breaks that allow people to see things that they're really not seeing and seeing African destinations become trendsetters in other parts of the world. Take one look at what Beyonce did with Black as King and you're seeing the influence of African city breaks and African urban tourism actually driving trends worldwide. Marrakesh, a city steeped in history and culture, has become a haven for luxury travel in Africa. With the opening of Nobu Hotel in January of last year, the city cemented its status as a must-visit destination for discerning travelers. 
It's a, a, a real pleasure to be here in, in Morocco and especially Marrakesh. Uh, Marrakesh is magical. Everybody is talking now about Marrakesh. It's a vibrant city, like attracts a lot of nice luxury brands. Morocco is a, a global destination, especially in Marrakesh. There is quality hotels that have already existed for many years. But no, Nobu adds that difference when it comes down to the different vibe. So we saw, that, and I've been, we've uh, been investing and in coming to Marrakesh for the last 10 years. So I saw that there was a gap in the market for something that was very much engineered around the modern traveler, you know, the younger, more um, dynamic guest. The Nobu brand has been built on its cuisine. The first restaurant opened in New York in 1994, founded by world-renowned chef Nobu Matsuhisa and investor Maya Tepper. It offered an unforgettable dining experience with its innovative fusion cuisine and impeccable service. The service is very important and I think in a hotel this is the number one. Because every hotel is a bed and every hotel is a shower and every t a t hotel has a, t a TV. So it's, it's, you know, the difference is what kind of service uh, you give to the, to the customer. The brand has now grown to 56 restaurants worldwide and a chain of hotels promoted by passionate investors, including Hollywood superstar Robert De Niro. The food holds up to what Nobu does. Marrakesh is a great um, city, I, I, and I've been here a few times in Morocco and over the years. It's great and the hotel is great. The Nobu Hotel opening in Marrakesh is symbolic of a broader trend of luxury brands targeting the African market, something that is likely to continue to grow in the future. There is a lot of luxury areas in, in, in Africa and uh, for, for sure uh, it's, uh, you know, emergent like a continent now and uh, I'm sure that a lot of uh, brands will still, you know, uh, settle like in Africa. Marrakesh is known to be a very international city. Uh, it's a very, there's a lot of tourists that come here to, for vacation. Or, and um, we felt that uh, it, it could do well here. And that's why we are here. Maybe it would go to different cities in Africa. Um, We'll see. Indeed, as Marrakesh embraces its role as a beacon of luxury and sophistication, the allure of Africa as a premier travel destination only continues to grow.